Yo, what's up? This is Joshua Casper. Welcome to another very exciting video tutorial for Ableton Live. This one's going to be on how to make these custom lesson panels over here. You see I've got a couple of different pages in here. I've got some hyperlinks. I've got some images embedded. And this is all, you know, could be about anything really you want. But specifically, this is about for this mastering rack. By the way, you can go download this on my website. Hint, hint. But, uh... It's about the information about the, the mastering rack itself. Um, it's got links to the actual tutorial, the video tutorial for the mastering rack, to my website. And uh, this is a little bit more involved, but a lot better than the info view. So you can totally write some information about this device right over here. Uh, if to do that, you right click and then edit info text. And then when you edit that text, it will show up over here when you hover over the device. But uh, this is a lot more involved, obviously. You can have photos and links and stuff like that, so it's a lot better. Usually when you download a pack, you'll see this pop up. And then if you want to view that in the future, you would go over to view, help view, and then you hit the, the this would show up, and then you'd come down to show all built-in lessons. And then that will bring up the lessons that have been installed from these official packs. Now, what I'm about to show you does not show up here. You need to be certified from Ableton. As far as I know, I've got a friend who works very closely with Ableton, and that's what he told me. You need to have a certificate, and they'll tell you how to do it. But what I'm going to show you does not do that. What I'm going to show you is just um, how to set it up so when someone opens the project from the project folder you give them, it will show up. But if they move any of the files or anything like that inside of the project file, then it will go away. So the first thing you need to do is set up the file structure. So what you would do is just save your project with any name that you want to um, your project file. So I just saved a project called Standard Mastering Chain Project. And then what you're going to do is create a new folder. You know, come to folder, new folder, create it. And then copy just the actual name. So control C if it would be the, uh, the standard mastering chain. You don't want the .als, the Ableton Live session. And then you would, on the new folder, you would put the project name just like here and then a space and then lessons, capital L, plural, boom. So once you've done that, you want to come in and you want to place any images that you have for your lesson inside of here. I have just placed it in directly inside of the folder, but you can, if you're going to have a huge lesson, you could always create a new folder. It's just going to be a little more complicated, just a tad more complicated uh, about how to point the lesson to the images. So for the sake of this simplicity here, I just put them right inside. Then you're going to make a text file, .txt file, title it Lessons, capital L, plural, capital E, capital N for English. And Ableton's going to look for this. And this is going to be the default one because we only have one in here. But you can also set up other languages if you want. If you're going to have a, a landing page that you can choose different languages, you know, Portuguese. So uh, that's what you do there. And now the next thing we're going to do is get into actually scripting. Now I'm going to use Notepad++ because I'm on the PC and this is free and it's a great program. But you can use just a text editor, whatever you want to set this stuff up. Now inside here you need to set up first the page. As you can see here, page name, and I'm just going to call it Mastering Chain. And this is going to be the actual, uh, right here, as you can see, the page name is Mastering Chain. And then I can go to page two, and this is about the EQ. So the money sign capital P page is the name that's going to be on the title of the window. And as you can see, I have a second page down here, which just says about the EQ8. And then there's something called target name, and that's money sign T, capital T for target, N, capital N for name, and then mastering chain. Now what this is, is when if you want to do internal linking inside of the actual lesson window. So if I come to the first page here, um, I have this link here. This is for information about the EQ8, click this. And when I click that, it goes to this page. But there's also this previous and back buttons. But this isn't going to work if you've got literally, you know, 30 pages of different explanations about different things. That's not going to work. So you're going to want maybe um, on the landing page, you're going to want a glossary with internal linking. 
okay? So that's what that is, that target name. That's where you're gonna go. So it could be page one or whatever you want. It does not have to be the name of the page. It just has to be a unique place to go. Um, I, for again, for simplicity's sake, I just use the same one just so you never really get confused. Now to, to load the images, you just put the image name and that will load the image right there, no problem. Cool thing about it, you can put the image anywhere inside of the page and it's gonna still load the same way. Generally with the packs and things, the image is on the top, um, you know, up here, first thing you look at, so it looks really nice. Uh, also, the images can be any height. The width needs to be 260 pixels. Uh, if you go to the blog post, you'll see that, obviously. There's a lot more information about the size and stuff, but essentially it needs to be 260 pixels wide. It can be shorter, but I suggest making it the full 260. That way, when the project is open, the image is nice and um, lined up flush with the, the outside of the, the panel. Next thing we're gonna do, talk about is the asterisk. You asterisk, then write some text, and then another asterisk will uh, make the whatever's in between the asterisk bold. That's something great. Uh, spaces will show up just like regular spaces. You, you just need to leave them here. You don't need to put any, you know, like uh, some standard HTML, like a break. You don't need to put anything like that. Also, one last thing about the images. If you made an images folder inside of your lessons folder, you would just write, if it was titled images, you would just do that and this will tell Ableton go to this folder inside of the lessons folder and then look for this image. But like I said, for simplicity's sake, we didn't do that. Uh, the next thing is S-Links. S-Link, some text, and then open bracket, go to page, colon, about the EQ8, end bracket, close bracket, is go to page, this is Internal linking, like I said, you can go to any page inside of the lesson plan as long as you have it set up for a target name. For example, the target name is about EQ8, so I told them to go to page, I told the program to go to page about EQ8. So that, I hope that makes sense. S-Link by itself, like down here, and then some text, and then open bracket, and then a um, URL for a place on the web, close bracket, is a external link to somewhere on the web. It will open your default browser and bring you to the page that is linked inside of there. So S-Link is gonna be linking, but if you wanna do it internally, you gotta go go to page, colon, and then whichever page target you've set. External linking, S-Link, just open bracket, URL, close bracket. And then when you want to add a second page, you just have to set up the page about uh, the uh, dollar sign page, dollar sign target name, just like that. And you just do everything else again that you want to do. So this is the EQA. Maybe I wanted that to be bold or something. So now that would be bold inside of the lesson view. And of course you can create as many pages as you want. As you can see here, I've loaded two images. I've loaded the main rack image and then I've loaded, uh, loaded a EQ example. Um, and you can get as vol involved with that as you want. So that's how you do it. Then you would just go ahead and save it. Uh, you would exit out of that program. Then your file structure would look something like this. You know, your whichever image assets you have, your text file titled Lessons EN, just right inside of that main project file. And now you don't have to worry about anything else. Once someone downloads your actual project file, opens it up and just opens it up just like they would any other project, as soon as it opens, it will automatically have this open and their eyes will be drawn right to it because it's obviously pretty flashy and they can read the information and have the links for you. That's the way to do it. It's pretty cool. I guess it's kind of niche only if you're making packs or you really are sharing something complicated with your buddy and want to leave a bunch of notes and don't have any other way to do it. But I, I think it's fun to do stuff like that. And big shout out to the user on Facebook that kind of told me that there is a workaround to get it done because I thought there wasn't after my friend that works with Ableton told me there wasn't, you needed to be um, certified to do it. So that is pretty cool if you ask me. The files, uh, this entire file will be up on the website. You can go download it. So you can just download the zip, I'll have this, and then you can look at you know, the, the, the dimensions, 260, uh, width is the only thing that's really important there. 
and then you can open up the txt file and just kind of maybe manipulate what you need to manipulate to get what you want going but of course uh, i hope that helped i hope you guys learned something and we will see you next time peace